as we move through the Gospel of John, it's good to remember that John didn't record every sign that Jesus did. John tells us many other signs Jesus also performed in the presence of the disciples, which are not written in this book. These have been written so that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing you may have life in his name. Thus far we have seen Jesus turn water to wine, heal the royal official's son, and the man who'd been lame for 38 years, walk on water and multiply fish and loaves. John tells us about another miracle in this chapter, one that clearly testifies that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God. But not everyone believes. I'm in John chapter 9, verse 1, reading from the New American Standard Version. As he passed by, he saw a man blind from birth. And his disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he would be born blind? Jesus answered, It was neither that this man sinned nor his parents, but it was so that the works of God might be displayed in him. We must work the works of him who sent me as long as it is day. Night is coming when no one can work. While I am in the world, I am the light of the world. The sovereignty of God is so beyond our understanding. It would be simple to be able to say, this man's blindness is a result of sin, either his own or his parents. It also would allow one to feel good about oneself. I'm not blind, so I didn't sin like he did. But Jesus says that's not it. This is about the purposes of God. This man was born blind because God knew that one day, this day, he would be glorified through it, God knew that Jesus, the light of the world, would shine on this man. Continuing verse 6. When he had said this, he spat on the ground and made clay of the spittle and applied the clay to his eyes and said to him, Go, wash in the pool of Siloam, which is translated sent. So he went away and washed and came back seeing. Therefore the neighbors and those who previously saw him as a beggar were saying, Is not this the one who used to sit and beg? Others were saying, This is he. Still others were saying, No, but he is like him. He kept saying, I am the one. So they were saying to him, How then were your eyes opened? He answered, The man who is called Jesus made clay and anointed my eyes and said to me, Go to Siloam and wash. So I went away and washed, and I received sight. They said to him, Where is he? He said, I do not know. So Jesus sees this blind man, applies the clay, tells him to go wash. He's healed and we don't see further interaction between Jesus and the man. We see the reaction of those around him. People know who he is. He's been blind his entire life, and people know him as a beggar. But this is a miracle, so some can't believe their eyes. This can't be the guy. How is he walking around seeing things? The man tells them what Jesus did. This is creating a stir, as Jesus knew it would. Now the matter is about to be turned over to the religious authorities. Continuing verse 13. They brought to the Pharisees the man who was formerly blind. Now it was a Sabbath on the day when Jesus made the clay and opened his eyes. Then the Pharisees also were asking him again how he received his sight. And he said to them, He applied clay to my eyes, and I washed, and I see. Therefore some of the Pharisees were saying, 
This man is not from God because he does not keep the Sabbath. But others were saying, how can a man who is a sinner perform such signs? And there was a division among them. So they said to the blind man again, what do you say about him since he opened your eyes? And he said, he is a prophet. Is it any coincidence that it happens to be a Sabbath day once again when Jesus performs this miracle? No coincidence at all. It certainly heightens the tension. What the Pharisees don't know or refuse to believe is that Jesus is Lord of the Sabbath. Once again, a miracle has occurred, but instead of being awed by it, instead of seeing the sign and believing that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, they conclude the opposite, that he's not from God because he doesn't keep the Sabbath. But some among the Pharisees are bold enough to ask the question, how can a sinner perform such signs? They want to know what the blind man thinks. He says he is a prophet. The blind man surely heard some of the Pharisees saying Jesus was not from God. His answer basically said, oh, but he is. Continuing verse 18. The Jews then did not believe it of him that he had been blind and had received sight until they called the parents of the very one who had received his sight and questioned them saying, is this your son who you say was born blind? Then how does he now see? His parents answered them and said, we know that this is our son and that he was born blind, but how he now sees, we do not know. Or who opened his eyes, we do not know. Ask him. He is of age. He will speak for himself. His parents said this because they were afraid of the Jews. For the Jews had already agreed that if anyone confessed him to be Christ, he was to be put out of the synagogue. For this reason, his parents said, he is of age. Ask him. This would read like a comedy if it weren't so sad. The Pharisees actually conclude that this man in fact was not born blind. But they continue the inquisition with his parents and say, is this your son who you say was born blind? How does he now see? His parents are like, we know he's our son. He was born blind, but the rest of it, no idea. Ask him, he's of age. How ironic that we are dealing with a man who has received his sight, but it's the Pharisees who are shown to be blind. The Pharisees are the ones who are supposed to know scripture. Psalm 146, 8. The Lord opens the eyes of the blind. Isaiah 42, 6 and 7. I am the Lord. I have called you in righteousness. I will also hold you by the hand and watch over you. And I will appoint you as a covenant to the people, as a light to the nations, to open blind eyes, to bring out prisoners from the dungeon and those who dwell in darkness from the prison. These and other scripture spoke to God as the one who was able to open the eyes of the blind. It's obvious, but the Pharisees are so spiritually blind that they can't see the obvious, that this is God at work. Continuing verse 24. So a second time they called the man who had been blind and said to him, Give glory to God. We know that this man is a sinner. He then answered, Whether he is a sinner, I do not know. One thing I do know, that though I was blind, now I see. So they said to him, What did he do to you? How did he open your eyes? He answered them, I told you already and you did not listen. Why do you want to hear it again? You do not want to become his disciples too, do you? They reviled him and said, You are his disciple, but we are disciples of Moses. 
We know that God has spoken to Moses, but as for this man, we do not know where he is from. The Inquisition continues. They call the blind man a second time. And the first question is not a question at all. They say, we know this man is a sinner. I guess they want the man to agree and maybe they'll let him go his way. But this man is wonderfully cynical. I love it. I don't know if he's a sinner, but I'll tell you what I do know. I was blind, now I see. What a testimony. Raise your hand if you can say the same. I was blind, but now I see. This man has no fear of these Pharisees. His parents were very careful in how they responded to questions, but he's refusing to even answer more questions. I already told you and you didn't listen. And he even gets snarky. You don't want to be his disciples too, do you? And this, this, the Pharisees say they know Moses was from God. But as far as this man, we do not know where he is from. Despite everything Jesus has said and done in the last chapter, chapter 8, verse 42, Jesus told them, I proceeded forth and have come from God. But he added, why do you not understand what I'm saying? It is because you cannot hear my word. Remarkably, the blind man speaks to this truth. Look how he answers them. Continuing verse 30. The man answered and said to them, Well, here is an amazing thing that you do not know where he is from, and yet he opened my eyes. We know that God does not hear sinners, but if anyone is God-fearing and does his will, he hears him. Since the beginning of time, it has never been heard that anyone opened the eyes of a person born blind. If this man were not from God, he could do nothing. They answered him, You were born entirely in sins, and are you teaching us? So they put him out. I cannot wait to meet this man in heaven. His boldness is incredible. He didn't care. He basically said, go ahead, put me out. But y'all are crazy if you can't see that this is God. The miracle in this story is not just that this man's physical eyes were opened, but that his spiritual eyes were opened. The Pharisees, prideful, have to put him down before they put him out. You were born entirely in sins and you're teaching us? Jesus said this man had been born blind so that the works of God might be displayed in him. God is getting all the glory through this man. The light of Jesus is shining through him. Continuing verse 35. Jesus heard that they had put him out and finding him he said, do you believe in the Son of Man? He answered, Who is he, Lord, that I may believe in him? Jesus said to him, You have both seen him, and he is the one who is talking with you. And he said, Lord, I believe. And he worshipped him. And Jesus said, For judgment I came into this world, so that those who do not see may see, and that those who see may become blind. Those of the Pharisees who were with him heard these things and said to him, We are not blind too, are we? Jesus said to them, If you were blind, you would have no sin. But since you say, We see, your sin remains. Jesus is saying, If you were humble enough to recognize that you're blind, lost, in need of a Savior, you would have no sin. Their sin is the sin of unbelief. But because they are arrogant, thinking they see or understand the truth while rejecting the Son of God, they remain in their sin. I have to go back to this one line by the blind man. The former 
blind man who basically said, I don't know about the other stuff you're talking about, but here's what I do know. I was blind, now I see. Is that your testimony? That you know there was a time when you couldn't see? You couldn't understand that you were in sin? That you were in need of a savior? You couldn't understand the gospel but because of the grace and mercy and love of God, you now see. Your eyes are open to the truth. And like the former blind man, you say, Lord, I believe. There was a time we were blind to our need to cling to God. But now, eyes opened, we know we are desperate to cling. Take some time today to worship the one we cling to, Jesus, the light of the world.